Moving on now to linear inequalities. Now, the same rules when you're trying to solve for the solution set of an inequality, the same rules that you can use in algebra apply to uh, in equations, you can apply to inequalities. It's the same thing. The fact that there's a greater than or a less than or equal to sign doesn't change the fact that you can add numbers to both sides, divide both sides by something, multiply both sides by something. It's the same. Now, there's one exception. There's one special rule that applies to inequalities, and this is the rule. So let's say we were solving this. We could, if we wanted to, just you know subtract 6 from both sides, as we've done with an equation. We would get negative 2x is greater than negative 2. Now we would go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2, as we are allowed to do. So we do that, and here's the trick. When you divide or multiply by a negative number, you have to flip your, equal or your inequality sign. So it used to be greater than, now it's less than. So our answer is going to be x is less than 1. And I can guarantee one of the trap choices you're going to see is x is greater than 1 if you had forgotten to flip the sign. So the general rule, I'll write this down, when you're multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative number. So only applies to negative numbers. Flip the sign. Flip the inequality sign. So that's your one special rule. But otherwise, everything else basically that applies on equations applies here. So what is the solution set of this? So we'll go ahead and write down 4x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 6x minus 12. So I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, subtract 2 from both sides. I'll get negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 14. And remember, dividing both sides by negative 2, I've got to flip the sign. So the answer is x is less than or equal to 7. With these inequalities, just to avoid any issues, I recommend plugging in some points from your solution to make sure it works. So for example, let's plug in 0. So if I plug in 0, I'm going to get 2 is greater than or equal to negative 12, and that is true. If you plug in 10, you will see it doesn't work. So that's just an example of uh, plugging in some points just to double check, make sure you didn't make any mistakes. But remember that trick. Flip the sign when you divide or multiply both sides by a negative. Let's see another example. If 2p minus 7 is less than or equal to 13, 1 is the maximum possible value of 3p. So begin with your inequality. And you may be tempted, because we're asking for the maximum possible value, to start plugging numbers in, see if like if this is equal to 9, what would this would be 3, and then would that work? You could start plugging in, but you're going to get lost. So I recommend just solving this directly. So we'll add 7 to both sides. We get 2p is less than or equal to 20. So p is less than or equal to 10. So think about this. If the biggest p could be is 10, if the biggest 3p could be, would be when p would be equal to 10, right? We want to maximize this, which means we the 3 is, is here to stay, but we want to then maximize the p. What is the p going to be? Well, the p maximum p is 10. So the maximum that 3p could be is 30. And notice if you had, for example, this situation, let's say you messed up this problem and you got p is greater than or equal to 10. Notice this would have no solution. I mean, it would be basically infinity because p could be arbitrarily large. P could be a million, it could be a trillion, it could be one with a trillion zeros. Um, so this could just be arbitrarily big. So if you get something absurd, often that's a sign that you made some sort of algebraic error somewhere. So go back and check your work again.